Hi, in this video I'm going to be building a financial model that will help give you an overview of your personal assets and liabilities or your financial situation. Um, there are many reasons we do this, but at the heart of it is that it will help you get control of your financial situations and perhaps plan better for the future. It will also help you understand things like liquidity, um, future taxes, how your assets and liability move over time. And if you incorporate certain uh, return expectations and ability to put money aside in the future, it'll provide a fantastic foundation for the kind of financial plan that we really should all have um, for, for, for the future. Um, my name is Lars Croyer. I'm a former hedge fund manager who has written a couple of books about finance, and I'm now doing these videos as a hobby. So I'm going to build a spreadsheet entirely from scratch, and let's get uh, straight to it. So here we are at an entirely blank script spreadsheet, um, and I'm just going to go and let's call this this uh, spreadsheet asset overview, um, and then let's say we did this valid as of um, well, let's just say one seven two thousand eighteen. Uh, so this is one. So let's start with the first one. Well, let's say you have a portfolio of assets, of, uh, of uh, securities. Um, let's say you have some Vanguard um, equities. So I think the VRL. Um, let's say you have some government bonds. Uh, let's say you have some Facebook shares um, and some Apple shares. Um, and I just looked up uh, these tickers, uh, Facebook, APL. Um, let's say the currency you have them in, GPP, GPP, and this is USD and USD. So basically here we have your portfolio. Let's do underline and italic. I'm a huge stickler for this. Let's say your position, um, position, and let's say Yes, 750 of these, um, again, being a stickler for formatting, um, let's make every input number blue. Um, copy the formula down. Um, and then, so let's say you have 1,200 of these, 200 of these, 300 of these. Um, and I also just looked up the, the price of the mark. The mark is a finance term for the price, really. Um, uh, so let's say these are at 62. Um, and the reason I copy down the cell is because it's easier than changing the format every time 192. This, I did look this up a little while ago. So don't worry if it's not entirely um, right. So then what is that value in, in local terms? So we're doing this in pounds. And I want to start by saying, by the way, don't, these are entirely fictitious numbers. I hope I'm not offending anyone by having these numbers be too big or perhaps even too small. The whole idea is that I'm building this spreadsheet so that you can um, adjust it for your own, for your own benefit. Um, so don't worry if your numbers are vastly different from this. It almost certainly will be. This is a, um, and in case you want to know, this is not me either. So then um, let's say, what is the local value of this? So the pound value, and it's, our, so it's the position we have times our mark. Um, there you go. And let's just make that in, in single um, digit. And then I would say, um, what I always do here is I add sort of a note. Um, and uh, well, let's just make this is the the current, the pound value of this, and then the note. So then the note could be, let's say this is your pension, um, can't be unwound unless retirement or death, or to be morbid, and let's say this is a tax-free account. And let's say this is, a, you can just say this is bought XXS, this, um, you can put in the details. You don't have to do this. Uh, y, Y, Y. Then what we should also do is we should have what is the pound dollar FX rate? And let's say, I think it's one point, roughly 1.33 now. Um, and again, that should be a blue number. Um, 
and let's that equal to that, and then therefore this is a black number. So now we know that the local currency is not this, it's not the mark time of the position, but we have to divide by the currency to get into pound. Oh, sorry, local, what I mean local is obviously whatever currency it's quoted in, and then what you do in pound, it's equal to the local currency divided by the currency. Um, divided by the FX rate. So here you have your portfolio. Um, now we are ignoring a couple of things here. By the way, uh, if I can just suggest you check out my other videos if you're thinking about portfolio composition. This is the World Equity Index Tracker. Um, I have some videos why this is a great stock to buy. This is um, some UK government bonds. Um, also great to buy if you want to be very low risk. Obviously, Facebook and Apple, uh, generally, I recommend people stay away from single stocks. And you can check out my other videos why. But I just, in this case, want it to be reflective of, um, of how many people's portfolio would be. Uh, let's say we are here ignoring, ignoring accrued dividends. Dividends. We're actually ignoring a couple of things. Uh, in a later video, I'll be talking about tax liquidity and a couple of other things. But so this is your portfolio now. So let's then say on top of that, this is your basically your investment portfolio. Let's say you have some liquid assets. Here I'm talking your bank account. Let's say you have a Barclays account, which is a UK account, and let's just say it's cash, and that's gonna be let's say it's in pounds. Um, and then, uh, what is your position? Let's just call your position. So let's say you have 25,000 pounds, and that is obviously just simply its value. Um, let's also say you have a consumer loan, which I'd recommend you stay way away from, but loan, we don't have to call these cash, and let's say you owe I don't know, 50,000. So now you see 50,000. Then what you could do under notes is say, let's say it's due April 2019, unsecure. That's an example. Um, generally, do not have consumer loans. It, typically, the interest rates are way too high, and uh, you should certainly not have uh, high interest paying consumer loans at the same time as you have assets like Facebook and Apple. Um, that's something I'd recommend strongly against. Generally, that these things are not a great thing to have. Um, certainly, if you have liquid assets to pay them off. Um, okay, so uh, you could include here is unpaid taxes, if you had some. Uh, you could put that under liquid. Um, that would be a liability and potentially an asset. So let's say you have some property. Um, what should we say? Main house. Um, you know, and let's say that's in pounds again. We don't really have to say this every time, but um, now let's say it's a London house. That's probably fortunately for London, not going to be less than half a million pounds. And let's say you have. Let's just copy down some values here. Um, let's say value, and let's say you have a mortgage against this, and let's say the mortgage is for, let's say it's an 80% mortgage, which is quite aggressive, oops. It's, it's a big mortgage, four million, <laughs> there you go. Uh, so now we know that your value is simply the, the value of the house plus the mortgage, which is negative in this case. And then what I'd suggest you do is you say, well, how do you know it's worth 500,000? Um, there's a website called Supla which you can use for seeing how much your value is worth. And I would suggest you take a discount to that and then take away the brokerage commissions in case you want to sell. You don't have to do any of these things, but it's worth writing um, let's say, uh, writing it down just so you know um, how, you, how you got to this number. So let's say you're lucky enough to have a summer house or a cottage. and let's say that's worth 75,000 pounds. Again, these are, again, don't take, so you have a small value here. Again, it's the same value. You could even include car, uh, although, you know, only 
only if of substantial value. And uh, relative to value, uh, relative to assets, I say assets, and that you can do with that. Okay, so this is just a note to yourself. Then I say maybe let's have a miscellaneous category um, uh, where we can put other stuff. Miscellaneous. Let's say you invested in a friend's business. Let's call the friend Bob. That's my in Bob's business. And let's just say, let's just put a value. Let's put a note what you bought it at. Just note. This is important at some point if we do taxes in a later video. Let's say you bought it at 20,000. And let's just say it's worth, what's that worth now? Let's just say it's worth 20,000. Um, then let's say you invested in Crowdcube. By the way, we should note how it's value. So you can say value based on XXX, maybe lost funding around. Um, let's say you did some crowdfunding, Crowdcube is a site I know. Um, by the way, uh, as, a, as an aside, some of these, these valuations can be extraordinarily subjective. So um, let's say you bought that at 20 and let's just say it's gone up to 25. Although again, this is highly illiquid. Liquidity is a huge thing. So let's say this is also based on, in this case, let's call it YYY. So it's not the same. Last funding run. Um, and then what you could do is you could have another spreadsheet sort of see where part of the spreadsheet where you outline how you got to these valuations and let's say Say you're lucky enough to have an aunt that donated your picture. That was valuable. Let's say, no, you didn't buy it. It was given to you. Let's say it's worth 15,000. Let's say you had appraisal, appraisal value. Um, I don't know, Christie's, is that? <laughs> that sounds very snobbish when I say it, but Christie's, November 2017, just to pick a number. And then just finally say you have an annuity that you could cancel. Um, let's say a 10,000 cancellation value. Um, and let's say that's off the penalty. They often have huge penalties, these things. This is it. So let's say what else could you include? You can include stuff like inheritance. Um, you can include I mean, that's very morbid, obviously, and obviously, hopefully not something you'd see for a long time, but if it is substantial, it's worth noting, or at least being cognizant of it. You could, if you have some Bitcoin or crazy stuff like that. Um, so I think, um, you know, other, I would generally caution you against um, having uh, intangible assets here, um, but but of course you could, you could do that. So, um, this is it, so now let's do, this is your net assets. Now keep in mind, this is not a budget because we are here to saying what is, um, you know, what is your net worth, if you will, right now? What is your estate, you can almost think of it. Um, now, in a later video, I'll probably do one on ta introducing tax and liquidity and, and and maybe even make it, you know, one of the things I'd be, very useful is to see how this moves over time and, and maybe graph it and stuff like that, uh, which would be very useful. Um, but for now, let's just keep it as this. It's simply a sum of all this. Boom. So you have um, you have here your um, um, you have here your your net assets. Uh, what we could do is we can introduce your gross assets, um, just to give an idea of how geared you are. Let's make that italic. So, um, so that's simply your net assets. In this case, minus your debt. So you minus that, minus that, minus that. And some people would say mortgage isn't get debt, but I would argue it very much is. Um, you can even say a debt divided by net assets, which is would then be. Um, that is then this minus this divided by the net assets. 
and this should be, um, which obviously shows that partly because you could do this excluding your mortgage if you want. Um, but obviously some people say, oh, you shouldn't include your house in, in, in this, but I would argue that, you know, it is a real alternative to have your house be uh, sold and live in a rented accommodation. So I think house is definitely something you should include. Um, yeah, I think you could argue that some cases you should have a liquidity um, discount on things you can't easily sell. Uh, we've ignored that for now. Um, but generally, I think what we've done here is created a very simple asset overview um, that will be something you could look at and keep updated all the time. Um, as I said, the things we can add are liquidity, we can add taxes, we can add making it real time such that, for example, we look at this consumer loan. This is 50000 as of a certain date. Uh, what is that as of right now? The same thing with your mortgage. If you haven't kept up with payments, we can include that um, in a future spreadsheet. I think it's very, very important to understand that what this kind of thing does, it sort of puts all your assets in one place. You can look at it. You can even play around with it. You say, whoa, what, what would happen to my net worth if Facebook went to 80 a share? How painful would that be? You know, you can just simply put in the number. Just change that. You can say, what if the house prices in the UK went down by 30%? And um, how painful would that be? So that would make, um, yeah, this 350, sorry, 350,000. Yeah, we'd be in a world of pain. We'd be in a lot of trouble, basically. And that, and in turn, and by the way, that this doesn't include the fact that there's almost no way that your high price would go down that much in value without some cottage that you own also going down in value. And this probably would have them at the same time as your portfolio went down value. So this is this is the kind of thing that helps you think about the the correlation of your assets. Um, so I, I hope this is um, gives you an idea um, how this kind of spreadsheet could be put together. And it's very basic. And again, it's completely random number. So you should put this in, recreate this with your with your um, um, with numbers from your own economy. So thanks for watching. I hope that was interesting and useful. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel if you want to hear about future videos or um, share on social media if you think your friends would benefit from watching it. But in any case, I hope to uh, see you back on the channel in the future. Thanks a lot.